All right, we are live. I am live with Beth Ann Jones. What's up? The queen of Amarillo real estate. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Mike? I'm doing really, really well. I'm doing really well. Um, I'm so happy to have you on the show today. You and I met um, at EXPCon a couple weeks ago. And um, I just remember you making a, a, a just a really big impact on me. You have a great personality. Um, and I wanted to get you on the show to be able to tell your story. Um, you're a super, super humble uh, person. I know you, uh, you, you didn't think much of your $10 million, but I certainly do. And I know our audience does. And so I'm super excited to hear your story. So, uh, so welcome to the show, man. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. All right. So let's jump right in. Um, I, let, let's talk about, let's talk a little bit about your past and, and how you ended up in real estate. Um, okay, so I was um, I got a marketing degree and I thought I was going to go off and be um, a writer. I wanted to write books and, and be a journalist and then um, got married and started having babies and realized probably need to stay at home with them. <clears throat> Stayed at home with them for a little bit and realized that I needed adult interaction. <laughs> and so my husband really encouraged me to go get my real estate license and I was licensed in 2011 and um, kind of did it as a hobby. Um, didn't really plan on making it a, a full-time career or anything, but that's just kind of how it happened. I started at an independent brokerage, um, got a lot of amazing training there, love my my raising in real estate with them, um, but knew I needed something more. Um, I really was interested in starting a team and knew I needed to move to a bigger brokerage to do that. So I moved over to Keller Williams in 2014. Um, and loved it over there. I was on their agent leadership board for a couple years and <clears throat> um, really uh, dove in deep to, to what Keller Williams had to offer um, and loved it too. But then um, EXP graced its presence and, and I couldn't resist at that point. So, so we've been here for nine months. Awesome. Awesome. And, and so there, there's a lot to dig into there. So I want to go back to like when you first, um, so you're an A&M grad, right? Gigum? Uh, yeah, West, Te West Texas division. Okay. All right. Um, I just wanted to throw that in there, but, um, so talk about, you know, I talked to a lot of people who, you know, you, you know, you did, you made a sacrifice, right. To, to have a family, right. And you raised your kids to the point to where, you know, you felt like you could go out and start something or, or make your way in the world professionally. And, and so you decided to get into real estate. Here's what I'm curious about though with you. Okay. So like, how how did you decide that real estate was what you wanted to do? Um, you know, I never I love houses, I love watching the shows, things like that whenever I was younger. But my husband always told me and my parents told me this growing up that I should probably be a lawyer because I can argue with anybody and probably win. And so I knew I'd be they knew I'd be a really good negotiator and whatnot. Well, I didn't want to go to law school. I didn't want to be a lawyer. So they thought, well, man, maybe you need to get into something where you can negotiate for a living. And that's kind of how real estate was brought into my life. Now, is that because you always argued with your parents when you were growing up? <laughs> I was always right. <laughs> All right. I love it. I love it. All right. So, um, so, okay. So you decided real estate was it now, you know, the progression from, okay, I'm just going to get my real estate license and you know, I'm going to do this part time, right? Cause I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to be a mom and I, and I'm going to be a supportive wife. I'm going to do all that stuff. And then, so what clicked for you when, I mean, because now you, you know, you're obviously you're, you, you built a team, you're doing $10 million. How did, what clicked in your mind from, Hey, I'm just going to do this part time to, um, you know, what? I, I've decided I'm going to build a team. Like what did you, what, what information came to you to make you want to pursue building a team? Um, so one thing about our market is, um, our area is, like five to 10 years behind on the times. So when teams were super popular, probably, you know, 10 years ago, they were just kind of being introduced to our area about six, maybe even seven years ago. Okay. And, um, and I knew I wanted to coach. I've always, I love teaching and um, I love helping people. And that was another reason I got into real estate, but I also saw a need um, in our market where other agents really needed help. Um, and so I knew at that point, do I want to coach? Do I want to train? You know, how do I even get into that? Um, and I thought the quickest way possible, because I had a lot of people coming to me saying, hey, I want to get my real estate license. Can you help me? 
And, and so of course I'd be helping them and, and I had all these people getting into real estate, but it wasn't necessarily a team. And then of course the team aspect started uh, really kind of vibing in Amarillo. And at that point I kind of put two and two together and realized, okay, you know, maybe instead of coaching and training, I can kind of have the best of both worlds and I can build a team, help these agents, um, grow our numbers um, help our clients better. And I'll still get to be able to teach and coach at that point. So, so who, who was, who was kind of a mentor to you coming into the industry or at least when you decided you wanted to build a team? Um, so coming into the industry, um, my broker, my, my first broker was a, was a huge um, asset and I looked up to him and I still do to this day. He, you know, he's still a very, very good friend of mine. Um, but where I was, wasn't necessarily a team friendly brokerage. Okay. And again, it was something that was so new that in, Maybe he just didn't necessarily know how to handle it. I, I don't know. But I just really felt like God was pulling me to a different direction. And at that point, Keller Williams was the place to go to start a team. So um, as far as having having someone to look up to for a team, it was really kind of the other teams at Keller Williams because I I am known to be very impulsive and to just kind of wing everything. And so I just kind of watched and learned at that point how to do it. And so. Yeah. So you, so you're, you're, you're more of, um, I can see that in you. You know, I, I think you, you, you're a very independent person, um, to, to a certain extent to where, you know, you'll just kind of, it's just like when you decided to, you know, commit to being a mother. Right. And, and like, so you just, it, it's like you, when you commit to something, you commit to it. Right. And, right. and, and then the results show up. So, so, Oh, so you got into real estate and you really just started to kind of you you became a sponge and you just you soaked it all in. And so you got in in 2011 and here we are in 2018. Um, what does that road look like for you over the last seven years? Um, you know, it's been crazy. I I started just I, honestly, um, I, I wanted to be extremely part time. I was looking at it as a hobby. I, I would tote my six month old around when I first got into real estate. And so he went on every open house and every listing and all the showings and all of my meetings and everything. And he was right there with me because that that was my priority at the time. Um, and it still is. But um, I just got I got so busy and it, a lot of the times it's not what you know, it's who you know, right? Well, I was born and raised here. My daddy is a pastor here. Um, <clears throat> my husband worked at one of the largest um, uh, government facilities here. So I had a lot of people calling me based off of my contacts and right. who I knew. And so I got so busy at the time that I realized I could really, I could do well here. And, and it just kind of took off from there. What year was it that you decided you wanted to form a team? Like, so, it, so 2011, you were just on your own, right? It was just kind of referral business at that point. Yeah. So when did you decide you were all in on, on trying to build this team? Um, at beginning of 2014 is whenever I really started watching, um, some of the other teams in our area and what they were doing. And at that point in time, I really felt like God was calling me to coach and to train. Um, and so Beginning of 2014, it was kind of a, a something that I filed away in the back of my head. Didn't really think much of it. Um, asked my current my broker at the time about it. He couldn't really guide me in that right direction. So again, I just kind of filed it away. Um, and then I kept being approached by Keller Williams, and uh, and of course I had become friends with a lot of agents over there. And they thought, man, if you're really wanting to build a team, you need to get into a, a larger brokerage, yeah. and it will supply you what you need to do so. Yeah. And so by October of 2014, I had moved my, my business and um, immediately had an admin and one agent with me right when we moved. So wow, that's um, awesome. so is that is that kind of when your production really started to take off? Yeah. So, you know, you joked at the beginning that I was being uh, humble with with our ten million dollars in sales. When I left my first brokerage, I was a top producer at three and a half million. And uh, and so I thought, you know, I'm a big deal. I'm moving over to Keller Williams. Well, when I got over there, I was like bottom of the totem pole. Three and a half million like was on the scum of their shoes. And so I really had to take a step back and realize, OK, um, I need to be up there with the big dogs. And so, um, you know, started friending some of these people that are doing, you know, three, four, five, 20 times more uh, the amount of, of business we were doing and just sat back and watched and observed and learned from them. And then became one of them, right? Uh, well, yeah, I'm still working on it. 
So. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. And yeah. so, so tell me, obviously you, you've, and, and I had a very similar story. I mean, I started off with a, um, I started off with a, a mom and pop here, an independent brokerage, and then um, wanted to grow a team like you did and, and ended up moving to Keller Williams and spent three wonderful years at Keller Williams. Uh, no complaints. Thought it was a great place to be. Right. Uh, and then, you know, just decided uh, when we had heard about EXP uh, because we, I was going to open a market center. We were, we had actually already had um, our market center in the South region approved by uh, uh, KWRS. All, everything was approved. Wow. You know? And so, and then I found out about EXP because I did some uh, some coaching through those guys at uh, NAEA um, with Jay Kender and, and, and those fellas. Um, but so to your point, you so you moved you you moved to Keller Williams because you knew it would help you accommodate growing a team, and it did, right? It served right. its purpose. Absolutely. And I'm assuming you built some great relationships there, mm -hmm. right? And probably still have those today. Because we don't burn any bridges, and then and then this company um, comes out of the blue, right? You hear about this company, and um, it's called EXP, and and then what happens to you? So, um, it's a little bit backwards, you know. I told you I'm super impulsive. So, um, when I I didn't even really hear about EXP. Um, so I had decided um, at the end of last year, after Hurricane Harvey hit South Texas and, and all of those regions, I really felt like God was telling me to go down and uh, bring supplies down, help in whatever way I can. And so three days later, um, I had a team of eight agents. We had $20,000 in donations, and then we had a semi and five trucks and trailers full of donations. So wow. we drove down to Houston. It took us 17 hours to get there when it should have only taken us nine. But, wow. um, you know, it was just, it was rough. Um, we made it down there, and a friend of mine who I hadn't spoken to in 13 years messages me on Facebook, and he says, hey, I see you're coming down to Houston. Do you know where you're going? said, nope, God just told me to go to Houston. I'm driving to Houston. I said, okay, well, I'm actually stationed in North Houston. My company's doing the same thing. Why don't you just meet up with me? And I said, perfect. Don't have to think about it. I'll just meet you there. My sister lives in Cypress, Texas, which is North Houston. So I knew I was kind of kind of heading that direction. Well, he gives me the address of the of where their their drop spot is, and it's 1.2 miles away from my sister's house. Yeah, and so we we pull in. He introduces me to um, his company that he brought down to help with. Did I lose you? No, no, no. I don't okay. Know. Um, and I really fell in love with with their heart for the community and lined right up with ours. And then I fell in love with with their their product. And so I ended up opening up a whole nother business, out, you know, uh, impulsively. And so I knew I had to figure out a way to be two places at once. And the only way to do that was to get my own freestanding brick and mortar office for company number two and move my real estate team into that same building. Go ahead and talk about that. Cause I mean, you're like, I, I don't want you to like, you're an entrepreneur at heart, right? And yeah. and I, I know this of you already, and I, I want you to share that with our audience. What is the second business? And I know there's a third one as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, company number two that I opened up last year is an IV rehydration company. I love it. Uh, yeah. Um, I was the first franchise with this particular company, and there's about 30 locations now in Texas alone. So it's called HydroPros IV Rehydration Specialist. Most of our offices are down in South Texas, so we're the furthest north. But it's been it's been really cool, and it's funny because I'm terrified of needles. I mean, I'm covered in tattoos, but believe it or not, I'm terrified of needles. So and this really is for people that are sick, right? Not people that are hungover or no, no, no. It's for those people too. So I mean, we offer all all different things. We have. Um, probably 40, 40, 50 different IV cocktails from the hangover cure that you hear about in uh, Vegas and all over the place to um, people that just, uh, you know, are dehydrated and, and need help getting their bodies back up to par. Um, cancer patients that are going through chemo and um, their immune system is just completely shot. And so we're rebuilding their immune system. So all sorts of cool stuff. Flu and cold, which is super popular right now because everybody's getting yeah. sick. So... Um, anyway, so I opened up that company and I knew I needed to be two places at once. Only way to do that was to move my team into the same building that I opened up HydroPros into. Signed a three-year lease, got the blessing from our um, team leader, 
uh, at our market center. And then about three days after I signed this three year contract with my uh, my office location, they told me that I would not be allowed to meet any of my clients over at this office. And it was against the contract that I signed with them, you know, three and a half years ago. And uh, and I said, well, you know, you already gave me your blessing on this on this uh, lease and I'm stuck in it for three years now and I'm not going to run all over town to meet my clients over there um, whenever I can meet them at my office where everything is readily available and I'm not going to have my team do it either. And, and I, you know, I argued back and forth with them. What's the difference in um, somebody who doesn't have an office and is meeting them at roasters and or Starbucks, you know, coffee shops, whatever. Anyways, it just didn't. Uh, you know, it just really put a bad taste in my mouth at that point. And at that point, uh, another another team had just left Keller like that same month wow. and EXP. And so I called them and I said, I don't want to know why. I just want to know how I, I, I got to do something. I got to do something quick. And, um, and I needed at that point, I knew I needed a cloud based brokerage or um, a rented broker, so to speak. So I didn't know exactly which way I was going to go, but I fell in love with EXP once it was introduced to me. I was already looking um, and I also knew that I was on the cusp of something really awesome um, that's completely untapped in our market. So that's what that's what really kind of drew us accidentally fell into EXP. <laughs> And you're the first person that I've heard tell that story, but every no one tells the same story. And so yeah. that's that's part of the reason why I wanted you to come on is because, you know, everyone has a unique story to tell. And yours is certainly maybe the most unique that I've heard so far, yeah. because it seems like, you know, when you talk to independent people, like people that ran independent brokerages like Jay or Al or people like that, or like Kyle Whistle or, or, or Dan Beer, you know, they have they have a different reason why they joined. And then when you talk to people that joined from Keller Williams like us, like we have a different reason we joined. And, and then you and I even joined for, for different reasons. Um, you were just you knew you needed something different and it was kind of the right place at the right time. Right. Right. So I always laugh that um, God opens a lot of doors for me and that God and I like to play jokes. And so I've always said that God will blindfold me, shove me through a door take the blindfold off and run and let me figure it out. And I really feel like that's kind of what he did. Not only when I opened up Hydro Pros, because I had no idea what I was doing. I'm not medically licensed, yeah. um, but all of my staff is. So um, they've been a huge asset. But um, that was the same way with the XP. It was, you know, I was blindfolded, shut through a door and knew it would work out. And it did. And it's been absolutely wonderful. So. I love it. I love it. So, okay. So, so, Let's dig into that just a little bit. So, okay, so EXP shows up and you knew you already knew at that point that you needed something that was cloud based just based on your circumstances right. uh, with with the office building. Right. And so, so so walk me through that. So you started I'm, I'm assuming you started doing your due diligence. You were researching the company. And then so how long from when you found out about it uh, to making the, the decision did that take? Uh, we found out about it in December and we were moved over uh, by February 1st. So it was okay. very quick. Okay. That's exactly the same time we move over. Wow. I mean, that, that's, that's, uh, we came over first of February. I think we came over like February 4th. Yeah. We actually came over like January 26th, but our anniversary date is February 1st. So it's just easier to say that. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. okay. So walk me through that whole process then of how, what did your team look like at the time you moved over? Um, we had, I believe, seven agents at that time, um, and uh, and we have we have six agents now and and two admin. But I'd moved brokerages before, and so I was like, oh, it's going to be rough, but it's not going to be that bad. But what I didn't put into account was I moved whenever I was an independent agent. <laughs> now I'm trying to move, you know, eight people over and triple the amount of listings and you know all of that. And the time that I moved over to Keller everything wasn't as uh, technology advanced as it is now. And so it, there was a lot more pieces that had to come together for us to move properly. Yeah. Um, so it was super hectic, but um, well, you know, we all just came together and, and everybody had a task to do and we had already had signs and everything and uh, business cards designed and, and printed ready to go. Um, so, I mean, it was, it was stressful but it wasn't anything that within two weeks we were comfortable. So talk about how you approached your team when you, so I'm assuming you found out about it first, right? And right. you started to look into it. And then, I mean, you have seven people who are committed to you and your vision. How do you approach 
those seven people who are, you know, working loyally with you at Keller Williams, who I'm assuming um, probably either they, they had maybe a, a small idea of what was going on or had no idea at all that you were looking to change brokerages. What, what did that look like? Um, we just sat down and I told them my frustration and, and there were some other minor frustrations along the way as well, but nothing that couldn't have been fixed or just kind of swept under the rug, nothing major. But uh, when we all heard about EXP, again, we knew that it was something that if we if we didn't jump on board soon, we were going to regret it. Yeah. And so we watched the webinar. We did the math. Um, and it just it just made sense to everybody. And we had a couple that were a little on the fence about it, but they trusted me and they I always told them, listen, let's just try it out. The, let's you know take this leap of faith together. And, and if it doesn't work out, it's not like we can't go back to Keller Williams or we can't go somewhere else. I mean, but I would rather I don't like living a what if life. Yeah. And uh, I, I would I would hate to sit here and think, oh, I miss that opportunity. And they all, you know, just kind of jumped on the bandwagon with me and off we went. <laughs> so. So, I mean, looking back on that decision now, how do you feel about it? Oh, it was a great decision. It was, again, it was one of those blindfolded doors we were all shoved through. And we didn't know what to expect or necessarily what we were getting ourselves into. Um, but the longer we've been in it, it made so much sense. And I wish I would have found it years ago. Yeah. So. And, and what is What does this mean? I'm not asking you to speak for your team, but like you have a good sense of your group and you know your people better than anybody. What do you think the decision has meant to them or what benefits have they gained by making this uh, change with you? Um, we've had a little more freedom. Um, I'm a very creative person. My team is a very creative group of people. So we don't necessarily like being told what we can and cannot do when it comes to our marketing and um, I mean, obviously, we know that there's certain compliance with the state that we have to follow. And that's, you know, and that's all great and fine. But we really wanted to kind of go against the grain a little bit. And we could not do that where we were. And EXP really opened up a lot of doors creatively for us, um, which we all loved. Um, but it also opened up a lot of doors for us to meet some really um, high powered uh, agents in the industry all over the world. And it wasn't like we had to go to these conferences um, like Family Reunion and Mega Camp, things like that, just to see these people in a room of 15,000. Yeah. Um, we could actually, you know, build a, an online relationship with these people like Jay and Albie and people like that and really kind of dig in a lot deeper than we ever thought we could. And so it's really allowed us, it's opened up a lot of doors for us to relationship wise all over the world. Um, and that's one thing that I'm super, super proud of and excited about because, um, you know, whenever you, you're sitting in a room or you're building relationships with agents that are doing, you know, like Daniel Beer, you know, 250 million or whatever his sales are, you know, I want to do that. Let's go hang out with Daniel online for a little bit and see what he's doing, you know. Uh, California guys, because, you yeah. know, they, they're always talking about their volume. You know what I mean? Yeah. They never talk about the number of transactions they do. And I, yeah. I say that lovingly because. I, Dan and I stood up on stage together when we collected the war, reward, awards for uh, number one with, uh -huh. and number two, who was us. So it's like, um, but you know, for you, like, I'm glad you brought that up and you, because the collaboration is something that I don't think I expected when I joined a company, but man, that is like, it is like catapult to the top of my list of reasons why we joined EXP. I didn't think, I mean, I knew there were some great agents that were joining the company, but I never knew the collaboration would be like it was. Is that is that kind of what you're thinking? Absolutely. The collaboration is in there. And and I don't you know, it's you know, a lot of people, they'll pay for coaching and whatnot. And that's and that's great. But I also feel like kind of this is the bonus you get you. I, I, it's a bonus for me to get to hang out with you today for a little bit. And then it's a bonus for me to to get to have a Jay Kinder at my fingertips anytime I need him. Like he I mean, he's there. That's a big freaking deal, you know, especially for somebody who's really trying to bring their um, their numbers and their team to the next level. To be able to look up to people like you and Albie and Jay and and everybody else, Curtis Johnson, um, all of them that are building these massive, awesome teams. I'm excited that I get to not only watch you guys do that, but then of course I can follow in your footsteps and figure it out too. So 
Yeah, that's and, and you, I mean, we both know we, we it, we'd be remiss if we didn't at least mention the opportunity uh, for revenue share. Oh, yeah. What does that mean for your group, the revenue share portion? Uh, of rev so, you know, we, we came from Keller and so we had profit share over there. And and of course, we thought that was, you know, amazing until we learned about revenue share. Um, so, of course, there's the incentive to not only bring on other agents and get incentivized for that, but that goes back to the collaboration. Um, we're all incentivized very nicely to help other people grow their business. And so there's a passion behind it um, and it's a priority at that point. Yeah. And so all of my upline has been extremely helpful and adamant making sure that, you know, we have what we need from them to, to do that because it benefits them in return too. Yeah, absolutely. So good. I'm curious because you, I think our markets are very similar. Um, um, I think Mark Twain said, if, 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 if the world is ending, I'm moving to Ohio because everything happens 10 years later. <laughs> and part of that is true. Um, but you, you being in a very traditional market, I'm curious um, how EXP is being received by the agent population there. Um, so, you know, a lot of it is education. Um, and when we've got a lot of the big dogs like Keller Williams, Coldwell Banker, places like that, that aren't fully educated on what EXP is. And so they're telling their agents what they know about it. Well, unfortunately, a lot of it's very misleading or it's just not true. Um, and so we're having to go back and re-educate as much as we can. Um, and so it's being received by the open-minded uh, agents, but there's a lot of agents in our market center that are very comfortable and traditional and that's great. I mean, yeah. we're big fans of doing what's best for you, of course, but I think if, you know, it's just, it's, it's new. There's 35 agents in Amarillo that are with EXP out of uh, about 850 agents. And so it's still very, very new, very, very small. Um, so it's great for us because we're kind of, you know, the front runners of, of this new, idea of real estate but uh, you know there's just some education that's got to continue to take place for people to really understand the um what they're missing out on yeah and and so my guess for you is you're excited to take the leadership on that right and oh yeah oh yeah i've recruited i have i've recruited seven eight people now and then help them recruit um 18 people wow. so um i have 18 out of the 35 under me that so. is Fantastic. That, that's yeah, awesome. yeah. So we're really excited and there is addition. I offer my team additional incentives to go and recruit as well. So, yeah, yeah. that is great. And so you're, you're, I mean, you're, you're changing lives out there. So what, what's like, assuming the dust is all settled for you, let's talk big picture now. Like where, what is the goal for you and your group in 2019? <laughs> Um, you know, my, my personal goal is not necessarily about numbers. Numbers are always great. But again, I go back to that, um, that coaching and training heart that I have. And I just want to make sure that they have exactly what they need to bring their, their sales to the next level. Yeah. And so that's really going to go back to each individual agent on my team. And what are their goals? Because my goal is to help them get to their goals, right? Yeah. Um, and so as long as I can help them meet their goals, I've made mine. Um, and, and God will bless me in return for that. And so, um, but long term, I, I want to get the team up and running well enough to where I can expand. And, and uh, my, my family and I, we, we want to move to Florida. Really? Um, yeah. Uh, we had every intention of moving to Florida last summer and um, this past summer. But then we opened up Hydro Pros. <laughs> so, again, impulsive. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we knew that was going to set us back a little bit and that's perfectly fine. Um, but I would like to eventually expand over into Florida. What part? Uh, I really want to be on East Coast around Boca Raton. Sure. So, so I mean, it was cool because in New Orleans, I met several Florida EXP agents. So I'm yeah. already making those connections. And That East Coast side, man, that's hard. Those, the, you know, all those people are from New York and New Jersey. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They'll, they'll, they will probably take a, a liking to you with your uh, Texas twang. <laughs> probably. Either yeah. that or they're going to make a lot of fun of me. Yeah. No, I don't ride horses to work, guys. <laughs> the, the, I prefer the Gulf side just because I think it's a little more laid back. And yeah. I think most of the people from the Gulf side are, are typically from, you know, the Midwest. Yeah. Uh, 
but I, I totally get the draw to Boca in that area because there's there's a lot of money there for sure. <laughs> We just fell in love with it. We went and visited several times. We bought a timeshare down there. So we go down to Florida pretty often yeah. and we really fell in love there. And we visited the the West Coast um, and we loved it too, but we we felt at home on the East Coast. That's so, awesome. Yeah. Well, I know we're, we're running close to, to the end here and, and yeah. you've got other obligations, but real quick, um, so to that agent or that broker that's listening to us right now um, and they're sitting on the fence uh, or they're in a traditional market, but they're curious about eXp, what do you say to those people? Um, just, just come hang out with me for a little bit. Let's, let's talk about what, what's being offered to you right now and let's talk about what could you have at your fingertips. And, and again, back to not necessarily what you know, but who you know, and, and the, the caliber of agents that are, are moving their businesses over to EXP, that should speak volumes about the company in itself. Um, so I would, I would really encourage them to, to watch our webinar because that, that speaks a lot of, about what the company is. But what you don't see in that webinar are the people that you get to collaborate with. And that's, you can't even put a price tag on that. Yeah. And, you know, the importance of collaboration is you, you talk about business growth, right? When, right? when you have people that like Dan Beer uh, or like Jay Kinder who have gone out and achieved uh, success at the highest level or are uh, achieving success at the highest level and you get to tap into those, yeah. you essentially, you, you, you get to, they've made all the mistakes for you. So if you can tap into them and ask them questions, they can give you um, actionable they can, I mean, they can take your business from A to Z in, in, in you know, about half the time. And that's yeah, why you don't have to reinvent the will at that point. And so you learn from their mistakes and, uh, you know, they, they've got it figured out. So why would I try to do that myself? And that's something that you, you just can't put a price tag on. So yeah, I couldn't agree more. Listen, Beth, how can people, if people have questions about EXP or, um, just about how you grew your business or, or even if they just want to ask general business questions um, about real estate, how can they get in contact with you? Um, so I'm very heavy on social media. You can find me on Facebook, um, personal or, or businesses. Um, and I'll drop a link um, once we're done um, on like with my contact information about how they can get a hold of me as well or anybody on my team. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm very easy to get a hold of. So. And so here's what I know. Okay, so if, if you if you need to sell a house, you can call Beth. If you if you need IV rehydration, you can call Beth. Right. Uh, and if you if you if you if you're into CrossFit. Yep. Right. Yep. Can you talk yep. a little bit about that, and then and then I'll, I'll let you go. Yeah. Yeah. So um, my husband started doing CrossFit. He's he's a, a fit junkie. I mean, he's a beast. Um, and he started doing CrossFit back in 2010, uh, and he loves, you know, people and loves helping people as well. And so we decided to open up a CrossFit gym in 2013 and we're one of the, uh, one of the original CrossFit boxes in Amarillo. So, um, and it's still up and running going strong. So yeah. And we're all right next door to each other as far as, um, as far as where to find us. So we're, we're a one-stop shop. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, listen, if I have any referrals coming to Amarillo, I'm definitely sending them your way and, and hopefully our audience will do the same. Thank you so much for taking 45 minutes and, uh, and, and sharing your wisdom. Absolutely. I appreciate you, Mike. All right. We'll talk soon. Bye guys. Yay. Yep.